Yeah, g'day, it's Matt from Crank Engineering, and I just wanted to show you the chassis jig I built um, and just let you know how I did it in case you might be thinking to do the same thing. I figure if I'm going to hard tail a frame or make a frame, you know, you need to be able to make a jig first. So um, here's what I did and how I put it together. So I had a look around the internet, there's a couple of different plans you can either buy or download um, at pretty low cost. So I took the you know the ideas from those and the concepts and I looked at what I had lying around in terms of material and as much as possible try not to spend mega bucks building this thing so let's have a look at the general design so the main structure is two big C channels I think these are about uh, 250 perhaps um, I this was I picked up a scrap so I didn't pay for it so I figured I needed something strong um, for the frame so I used two pieces of this um, maybe a little short for a really long frame but um, it'll do for now if I have to I can always build another one of these frames um, so it's just bolted um, the two halves are bolted together through the legs and I put mine on casters only so I can roll it around uh, the place I figure that you know it doesn't have to be super level because um, really the the structure and all the strengths in in these big C sections here so it is bolted together so if I have to I can disassemble it and roll it out of the way or put it under a bench or something if I'm if I'm not using it. So in most of these designs you'll see they have a channel that runs up the center and the idea is you can cradle the frame in here and this um, really is just an, uh, allows you to slide a cradle in and out of here and I'll just grab one of my cradles so that you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this particular cradle um, I built for XS, XS650s, so this picks up um, lower engine mounts um, and it clamps down onto here and clamp the frame in here as well, so it does a good job of holding the, the frame in place while you're doing your welding. So that's obviously adjustable, you can move that where you need to. Um, so the front end of my jig, um, so it's a 50 mil square tube, but this is a pretty heavy wall thickness. This is 5 mil wall thickness. Um, again, there's some 10 mil plate that I had lying around, which I just cut into a couple of rectangles, one each front and back. And this is, I think, 10, 10 mil flat bar, 50 mil flat bar. Now, I have the luxury of having a milling machine, so I milled a slot in the center of that. And that allows me to adjust the position of my um, neck or steering tube clamps. So I fabbed up this little bracket. Again, it's just some plate uh, bolts through the back um, into here. And behind here is another plate in the back here, a narrower one, which uh, is drilled and tapped. And that's what these bolts pick up on. So it clamps this uh, bracket to the flat bar. Um, so yeah, this is just fabbed up, um, that 6mm plate just chopped up, um, I had some scrap rectangular bar around, so I've used that here, um, drilled and tapped it, I think this is uh, M20 all thread, so drilled and tapped for M20 all thread, so double nutted it and lock tighted it in, uh, to spun it in and lock tighted it in, um, the steering neck um, cups I held in place. These are just aluminium, so again, I've got a lathe, so I was able to turn these up myself and then drill and tap them M20. So you can adjust the, the height of this up and down, you can adjust the neck angle um, through this pivot point, and then you can clamp the steering neck in place between these two. And there's a couple of M20 nuts if you really wanted to, um, you know, you could lock this down if you had to. So that's the front, and then at the rear, Similar sort of setup, it's a bit shorter, it doesn't need to be as high because obviously the, the axle plate or the axle that goes through here is lower than, than the steering neck all the way up there. So similar setup, 50mm um, square hollow section, 10mm flat bar, uh, milled down the centre. Uh, again, I'd really do that just to get a really nice flat surface. Um, similar sort of setup, 50mm flat bar, 10mm uh, thick drilled and another bracket uh, another plate in the back that's uh, drilled and tapped as the clamping plate um, now this i've set up for 16 mil 
or 19 or three quarter uh, inch axles. So some of the designs I saw had a pair of holes so you can put two um, two steel bars in here and clamp the um, clamp around the adjuster plate in the uh, axle plate or the uh, axle hole in the axle plate. Sometimes I might use one, sometimes I'll use two. So they're just drilled and tapped with a little set screw on the top and that's that uh, rectangular or square bar is then welded onto these brackets. So it um, took uh, you know a few hours to make it but I figured it was a, an investment in, in what sort of work I was doing and, and what sort of work I'd be able to help other people out with. So you know this is not the only way to skin the cat. You can buy parts for these sort of uh, frame jigs from manufacturers in the US, supplies in the US, but you know I figured I was going to build frames, I'd better be able to build a jig. So here's how I did it and I've used it on a few um, Yamaha XS650s, I've hard tailed I think three of those and this has worked uh, just fine. So yep, that's a quick run through. If you've got any questions, post them in the comments or send us an email or look us up on Facebook and uh, thanks for watching.